Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Craig Jessup, and it's my great honor to be serving as the current dean of the King College of the Arts at Utah State University. And one of the great joys of serving as dean is working with the extraordinary faculty that we have at the King College of the Arts, one of whom you'll listen to this evening in celebration of his promotion to a full professor at Utah State University. I'd like to introduce to you Professor Sergio Bernal, an outstanding Latin American conductor, composer, and teacher. Sergio Bernal is the Director of Orchestra Studies and Professor of Music at Utah State University. His conducting activity has earned him international recognition as a tasteful technician with a more than technical gift for connecting with the score's essence. A strong believer in the power of music as a catalyst for social change, Dr. Bernal worked for a decade at El Sistema in Venezuela, the country's groundbreaking system of youth orchestras. As a composer, Professor Bernal explores the popular and folk idioms from Ibero-America and likes to do so in works for soloist and orchestra. His two concerti are written for prominent Venezuelan soloists and have received performances in the United States and Venezuela. A native Colombian, Bernal studied on a full scholarship and stipend in Yale University, affiliate artist conducting program. He holds conducting degrees from Yale University at the University of Michigan, where he studied with Gustav Meyer, and a PhD in composition from the University of Utah. He received additional conducting training at the Aspen Music Festival and the Tanglewood Music Center. In 1986, he apprenticed with the late maestro Eduardo Mata at the Dallas Symphony and subsequently worked as Mr. Mata's assistant in recording projects of the Ibero-American repertoire. Professor Sergio Bernal makes his home in beautiful Cache Valley, Utah, with his wife, Marina, and his beautiful daughter, Gabriela. On a very personal note, I want to say what an extraordinary, generous, and wonderful colleague Sergio is and has been to me and to my wife, Renee, from the day we arrived. From the very beginning, they invited us to their home for dinner and made us feel welcome and we have never forgotten their kindness and their generosity. And I also want to say that he is one of the finest collaborators I've ever worked with. He's so generous in reaching out to others and bringing things together. It gives me great pride to introduce to you Professor Sergio Bernal. Thank you, Dean Jessup, for your kind introduction. As a proud member of the Utah State University community, I feel humbled and honored by this special distinction you place upon me. Thank you to, to Kim Doyle for organizing this encounter in this space that so closely reflects what I do, and where at 7.30, the USU Symphony Orchestra will perform its annual concerto evening featuring the winners of the student concerto competition under my direction. Good evening, dear friends. Welcome to my inaugural lecture as full professor at USU. More than an actual lecture, I see this as an opportunity to celebrate with you and share some thoughts and experiences I have come across through the years. Thank you for hearing me out. One of the coffee mugs that my family and I have at home has an inscription that reads, genius, noun, one who does what they love and makes money at it. <laughs> one who can figure out how to retire early. Another way to say, annoy it all. I hope the third definition does not apply to me. I know the second one definitely doesn't. The first one, however, does seem to bear some truth. Not the genius part, of course. I am no genius by any stretch of the imagination. What I am is a very lucky person in that I get to do what I love 
and I even get to be paid for it. Not a whole lot, but still more than I need. <laughs> As a music person, and in a broader sense, someone who participates in creative, artistic endeavors, I love what I do for several reasons. When you do something creative, you live in the world of possibility. What could be more exciting than that? You get to explore and follow your wishes, your intuition. What a beautiful gift that is that you can offer to yourself. Your path of discovery frequently involves others, your teachers, your students, your peers. It is as much a path of friendship as it is of discovery. You never stop growing in your abilities, your self-confidence, and your sensitivity. Thus, you remain young. You gain an emotional understanding of the world. This prompts you to be a caring, compassionate individual, one who looks after the well-being of others. Ever since my childhood and throughout my education, training, and professional activity, I have been blessed by a wealth of opportunities to grow, become self-reliant, and in turn help others find fulfillment in their own endeavors. If asked to choose one single word to best describe myself as a child, I may want to say dreamer, though I wonder if daydreamer may be more accurate. <laughs> the truth is that I spent hours on end absorbed in my own imaginings. Luckily, my only sister, Viviana, who has always been more of a doer, helped me find grounding with reality and put my dreaming or daydreaming to practical use. Early attempts to turn fantasy into action involved airplanes, adventure, love. This is actually a make-believe wedding. My parents thought Maria Cristina and I looked so cute together that they decided to organize a wedding ceremony and a party afterwards. <laughs> Soccer. As a boy growing up in Bogota, Colombia, who would not want to be the next Pelé? And music. Much of my childhood and early adolescence went by between playing soccer. I must say my passion for it and my skills were two very different things. <laughs> Climbing trees, drawing with chalk on the pavement, going on family trips, I'm the one on the right. Playing the guitar, I'm on the left. And of course, going to school. Coming from middle class families, my parents worked hard to gain financial freedom and an improved quality of life. Ignacio, my father, died 10 years ago, at least 10 years too soon, at age 76. My mother, Lily, is still in good health, living in Bogota. I treasure every opportunity I have to enjoy her friendship, love, and wisdom. Early in their lives, both my parents benefited from having exposure to US life and culture. A self-made businessman, my dad was a pioneer of computer engineering in Colombia. As a young adult, he trained with IBM in Barranquilla and subsequently developed a successful career as the systems manager for General Electric in his native Bogota. As for my mom, for a few years, she studied at a Catholic boarding school in Staten Island during the week and stayed in Manhattan with my great aunt Celia during the weekends. When my mom returned to her hometown, Barranquilla, she worked as a secretary, met my father at the workplace, and they married in 1956. Shortly after, they moved first to Medellin, where Viviana was born, and then to Bogota, where I was born. Always an independent spirit 
My mother knew she would not want to be a stay-at-home mom forever. And when my sister and I were old enough to go to school, she went on to teach English at several elementary and high schools in town. Doing so gave her the satisfaction of making her own earnings. And from working with so many young people, she became increasingly fascinated with human development. This led her to get a bachelor's and master's degree in psychology and education long after Viviana and I had finished undergraduate school. And her love of learning still motivates her to this day. Needless to say, Viviana and I are extremely proud of our parents and thankful to them for their guidance and example. Given my family's affinity to US life, it is not surprising that Viviana and I did all our schooling at American schools in Bogota. What did come as a surprise, especially to my parents, was that when the time came to apply for college, I should be seriously considering pursuing a career in music. This must have been like a slap on the face to my father. After all the hard work he had put towards my professional success, how could I not choose a better paying, socially acceptable career path? Medicine, law, engineering? He was actually right. He had every reason to feel that way. Things were different in Latin America back then. The field of classical music was narrow, making the prospect of stability for musicians far from reassuring. In people's minds, musicians were good only for giving serenades, livening up parties, and drinking. I did study civil engineering for some time, while I continued with my music activities from the previous few years, namely studying at a private academy, conducting choirs, including Juventus, a youth choir I had founded, and writing short compositions and arrangements. My dear friend Julian Lombana, a very talented and charismatic musician and five years my senior, kindly shared with me his knowledge and filled me with inspiration and encouragement. My friendship with Julian spans over four decades. I appreciate him as much today as I did back then for his generosity and support. So after two years of studying engineering, it was clear to everyone that my heart was not set on it and that music played a central role in my life. My parents took a leap of faith, thank you mom and dad, and sent me to follow my dream in the US where I could stay with my aunt Isabel who lived in Queens, New York. You may have already guessed where my first subway ride took me on Monday morning. A brief conversation in that admissions office quickly woke me up to the steep path that lied ahead of me. However, that did not discourage me. After an intense couple of weeks of comings and goings, I was studying music at Queens College of the City University of New York. There, my enthusiastic teacher and advisor, Dora Pershing, took me under her wing and made sure I studied with the best teachers among them music theorist Carl Schachter, an acutely insightful being who opened my ears to the wonders of structural hearing in discussions that often touched upon human nature. I tried to talk with Dora and Carl at least once a year. I try to make them proud, and I make sure to let them know how much I appreciate them. Having finished my studies at Queens College, I was ready to pursue further training and work in conducting. Fortunately, as I came to discover over the years, the road would be a long and not always easy one. I say fortunately because it has allowed me to learn about myself and about the world, often through my own mistakes, but also often through the wonderful people I have met and have had the chance to interact with along the way. To put it in the words of one of my greatest heroes, our own Dean, Dr. Craig Jessup, it is all about relationships. As I look back at my own development, 
I couldn't agree more. Relationships enrich your life in much deeper ways than simple networking ever will. At the end of the day, they are what remains in you, far beyond any material gain or career recognition you may have been able to accumulate. This has happened many times in my life. Let me give you a few examples. Following Carl Schachter's advice, I sought to study with Gustav Meyer at the University of Michigan. From him, I learned the importance of staying true to the music, not being bossy, and what he called co-tailing, that is, looking for opportunities to apprentice from an established conductor with whom you might have affinity, a case in point on relationships. This is how I met, befriended, learned from, and worked with Maestro Eduardo Mata, at the time music director of the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, a frequent guest conductor of several famous orchestras in the US, Europe, and Latin America, and a champion of the music by composers from Latin America and Spain. Himself a composer who had learned from three Latin American masters, Carlos Chavez, Alberto Ginastera, and Julian Orbón, Mr. Mata generously shared with me his approach to score study, conducting gesture, rehearsal technique, and love of the repertoire. In addition, through him, I came in contact with another person who would influence my personal and musical outlook, Maestro José Antonio Abreu. In 1975, as Dr. Jessup mentioned, Mr. Abreu founded in Venezuela and subsequently developed a national system of youth and children's symphony orchestras that came to be known as El Sistema. El Sistema provides free classical music education that promotes human opportunity and development for impoverished children. Since its creation, El Sistema has acquired international prominence as a new model for social change, with many countries establishing programs inspired by its philosophy. In the early 90s, Maestro Mata was a frequent guest conductor for El Sistema in Venezuela and brought me there to assist him in his performance and recording projects with the Simón Bolívar Orchestra, an ensemble that would later become world famous under the direction of the young Gustavo Dudamel. I ended up working for El Sistema in Venezuela for the next 10 years, conducting orchestras at all levels, from beginning to professional, teaching orchestral conducting and music theory, and learning from Mr. Abreu. Mr. Abreu's unwavering dedication to social development through musical excellence shaped my views about the role of art in society and gave new meaning to my subsequent steps as a conductor and teacher. As we transition into the present, I want to say that having lived in Venezuela has special significance for me as far as relationships goes. That is where I met my loving wife, Marina. At once, I was taken by her spark, truthfulness, self-confidence, and affection. Ever since, she has been there for me every step of the way with her love and support while fulfilling her own aspirations that include obtaining a bachelor's degree in advertising and working for a TV channel in Venezuela, and upon moving to the US, learning English, working for the public schools, getting a master's in second language teaching, and teaching Spanish at USU. All of this in addition to being a dedicated wife and mother. Marina, I can't express enough my love, gratitude, and admiration towards you. Marina and I are blessed by the opportunity of parenting two beautiful children, our source of joy and pride. Our 25-year-old son, Jose Jesus, who is himself a father and appears in the photograph with our grandson, Gabriel. Jose Jesus has been living and working for a few years in Texas, and I am happy to say is coming back to Logan to study at USU. And our 14-year-old daughter, Gabriela, a gifted musician and actor with an inquisitive mind 
and a strong interest in the social sciences. That brings me to one of the most exciting and productive chapters in my life, settling here in Logan and working at Utah State University. During the last 15 years, I have met and rejoiced in interactions with some of the brightest and kindest students, colleagues, staff, administration, and members of the community one could ever come across. I thought I was here to teach, but I'm quite sure that it's much more what I have learned than what I have taught. Here are some of the things that, with your support, I have been able to do. Together with Marina and Jose Jesus, become a citizen of this great nation, the United States of America, thus coming full circle on a dream initiated by my parents more than six decades ago. Direct the USU Symphony Orchestra, an amazing group of talented musicians with whom I am thrilled and honored to make music every week and who will be performing shortly on stage. Teach music theory, composition, conducting, and oral skills. In other words, explore with my students the manifold mysteries behind music making that are in themselves expressions of life's countless mysteries. Study music composition at the University of Utah, leading to a doctoral degree in 2013. I believe music composition has proven to be, for me, a means of self-discovery and self-expression that feeds into my conducting and teaching. Embark on collaborative projects with ensembles, performance organizations, university departments, and the community. Some of my favorite collaborations involving the USU Symphony Orchestra in combination with other forces have been Appalachian Spring at the L.A. Nichols Theater with a Martha Graham Dance Company, for whom Aaron Copland wrote the music in 1944. Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring with the University of Utah Philharmonia Orchestra, celebrating the 100th anniversary of this great masterpiece. A Midsummer Night's Dream, a fully staged production of Shakespeare's play and Mendelssohn's music with the USU Theater, on this very stage. And the recently fully staged production of Mozart's La Finta Giardiniera with the USU Opera, also here at the Morgan. Guests conduct nationally and internationally. One of my favorite projects is La Via dei Concerti Music Festival in Italy. Organized by my lifelong friend Julian, the festival assembles young instrumentalists from around the world to make music together in ways that promote goodwill and integration among people by celebrating their diverse cultural values. Team up with the outstanding music educators we have at our public schools and the community to promote performance projects, clinics, and festivals that may enhance the growth of young instrumentalists in Cache Valley and the state of Utah. And last, but certainly not least, start and develop a program of free music instruction at the St. Thomas Aquinas Parish in Hyde Park. The purpose of the program is to provide children and youth with opportunities that will help them gain in skill development, self-confidence, and leadership for an improved quality of life. The program is open to anyone who wants to join in and in particular serves families from underrepresented populations to enhance their possibilities of academic and professional success and inclusion in society. Already in its fifth year, the program is steadily growing thanks to the dedication of volunteer teachers from the parish, the university, and the community. Our music group has played several times in concert with the USU Symphony Orchestra and the Children from El Sistema, Utah, a program modeled after Mr. Abreu's El Sistema. Their director, Trina Christensen, her daughter, Hannah, and campus coordinator, Connie McCullough, came all the way from Salt Lake City, especially for this presentation. Thank you so much for your support and for honoring us with your presence.
This video is from a recent concert, one that had special significance for me. After the concert, I could tell that performers and audience members were particularly moved and their thoughts tended to coincide with views that have shaped my life and career. Beethoven's setting of Schiller's Ode to Joy was the last piece in the program. Our performance seemed to have conveyed the work's message of people becoming united under the embrace of a loving creator. As the concert was dedicated to the St. Thomas Aquinas Parish in celebration of its 75th anniversary in Cache Valley, this was a good opportunity to bring people together from diverse sectors of our community. The participants in the concert, some of which appear in the video, were USU faculty members Max Madsen on trumpet, Lynn Thomas, organ, Nicholas Morrison, clarinet, and Cindy Dewey, soprano. Music educator and composer Deborah Baker Monday. The young violinists of St. Thomas Aquinas and El Sistema Utah. The St. Thomas Church choirs, both from the English and Spanish masses, singing texts in English and Spanish. The USU Chamber Singers and their director, Corey Evans. The USU Symphony Orchestra under my direction. The experience was meaningful to me because it seemed to encapsulate the essence of my beliefs as a musician, educator, and human being. They are, to be a musician, educator, and human being are for me one and the same. As participants in this life, we are part of a large team. We are responsible for one another. Through my entire life, I have been blessed by love and opportunity. Education is my way of paying it forward. Education is about including, not excluding others. It is about creating opportunities for others to shine. Like orchestral conducting, leadership is about listening. Teaching is about learning. Children are the promise and hope of tomorrow. Our responsibility to them is huge. I would like to end my presentation by sharing with you something that happened to me 40 years ago. On a Saturday afternoon in October 1977, a few weeks after I had started studying engineering in Bogota, I turned on the TV. A soccer game was about to start at Giants Stadium. It happened to be the last game that my idol, Pelé, was going to play before retiring. A crowd of 75,000 people that included celebrities such as Muhammad Ali, Henry Kissinger, and Mick Jagger <laughs> was there to pay tribute to Pelé, a man who came from humble beginnings and became the greatest soccer player of all time. Pelé took the microphone at center field and said just a few simple words that were not exactly about the sport. His message stuck with me ever since. He said, I want to take this opportunity to ask you, in this moment, when the world looks to me to take more attention to the young ones, to the kids all over the world. We need them too much. Then he said, I want to ask you, because I believe love is more important than anything we can take from life because everything else passes. To say with me three times, Love, and everybody shouted back, love and love. Then he broke into tears. So did I. I want to thank each one of you and all others who are in my heart but could not be here today because of other commitments, geographical distance, 
or because of already having left this world. You are my family. You are my friends. You are my learning partners. Thank you for allowing me to learn from you. And thank you for lending me a hand in passing the baton. Many thanks. <laughs>